Hey folks, Michael Collins here again with EnviroReporter.com on Tuesday, August 23rd, about 7.30 in the evening. As you can see, we have our inspector on our testing stand there. And we wanted to test something that we've heard about and uh, early on in the Fukushima crisis, which was contaminated seaweed, uh, I was able to go out yesterday and uh, go to a store and buy it. And uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, people like this stuff. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly do a spot check over it with the inspector. And uh, if it's interesting at all, then we'll run a 10 minute average. Now mind you, it's in the bag. Any alpha radiation that could be in this Japanese seaweed uh, might not, uh, well, wouldn't read through that plastic. So if we find anything interesting, we're just going to uh, take it out of the plastic. And uh, last background we took in here was about 41.7 counts per minute. See it up there in the 60s probably deserves a 10 minute background check. Maybe we'll just leave the detector right in the middle of that seaweed. There could be hotter spots. And uh, anything over background that exceeds 15%, the technical margin of error for the inspector, will be a significant fine. I think the clicks do some of the talking, so I'll set up the 10 minute average. Hundred percent calibrated. Ten minutes. Now you might be wondering uh, what's uh, What's the deal with the Japanese seaweed in the United States? Surely it's uh, been checked for any problems either in Japan or the U.S. Well, I'm, I'm not uh, sure it has. According to Arnie Gunderson, last couple of days he gave an interview where uh, Fairwind Associates gave an interview that said uh, he asserted that a high-level contact in the government uh, told him that uh, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton uh, soon after, about a month after the meltdowns initially occurred on March 11th of this year, 2011, that uh, there'd be no restrictions or, uh, as I understand it, special testing for uh, any contamination from uh, uh, any of the uh, areas close to the plant especially ocean contamination. As you, uh, most of you know, there has been untold amounts of highly radioactive water that have, has uh, been just, just gushing into the sea, and we just don't know how much. Uh, certainly in the beginning of the disaster, uh, good, uh, a whole heck of a lot. We do know also that uh, Greenpeace went out in the uh, uh, early part of this uh, crisis in May and uh, they went and uh, collected 22 seaweed samples along the uh, coast uh, north and south of uh, Fukushima Daiichi. They're about uh, 65 kilometers out to sea, about 40 miles and um, they were doing it in their Rainbow Warrior ship collected these 22 samples. Ten of them were contaminated uh, with levels, uh, significantly high levels of radioactive contamination. Ten samples show levels over 10,000 becquerels a kilogram, while the official safety limit for seaweed is 2,000 becquerels a kilogram, and for iodine, uh, uh, but, so in any case, 
10 out of 20 samples, 22 samples, Greenpeace uh, detected contamination and said that, uh, recommended that the Japanese government investigate this. Perhaps it has. And perhaps we are checking things like Japanese seaweed, see if they're contaminated. If we go over the background, which I, I can't tell actually by listening to the clicks here, but if we go over uh, 41.7, then uh, uh, we'll come back and we'll do a, another background uh, and uh, take out uh, the seaweed and uh, do a direct on the seaweed uh, examination of it because if there is alpha radiation in it that's the only way we'll be able to detect and to sort of try to match anything up here we'll put the detector in the same spot and use that uh, that keep it dry packet up at the top of the screen there that you can barely see right there um, as a marker. I personally find watching a nuclear radiation monitor take an average not that exciting. But what we have here is something that I could go out and readily buy. And as I understand it, we don't have any special uh, monitoring for uh, this kind of a product here in this country. It's being sold in this country and of course all over the world I'd imagine. Japanese seaweed's always been uh, highly prized in the culinary world. You can see by the, well actually you can hear and see because you can see that red light on the face of the inspector blink with every ionization event through its Geiger-Muller tube, like a tube in the detector. Uh, radiation does not, is not homogenous. It doesn't come at you in a steady rate. reason we have that foil on the top step here, and I checked it to make sure it wasn't hot, was because uh, once we put the uh, seaweed on it and lay the inspector down on it, it's going to, uh, I, I need to uh, get rid of the, uh, I don't want the uh, seaweed on the step itself, because in case, and we won't know till the numbers come in, Numbers aren't always necessarily definitive. I could have a 24-hour average. I could run this machine for 24 hours over that spot, then do it again over the same spot without the bag there and try to determine a relative beta versus alpha ratio. Or we can do 10-minute ones. reason you take background is you figure out how much radiation in, uh, is naturally occurring from cosmic radiation, the stars, the sun, the earth, which has radium and uranium in it, it's going to uh, shoot out uh, gamma rays and they, uh, have, they uh, will be in the environment. You take a measure of that, you know what your so-called natural level is. And then you take your next measurement on anything you might suspect to, that should be uh, tested and uh, then you uh, get your total and you minus the background and there's your overage to check for, see if it's uh, past the uh, margin of error for the machine, 15%. If it is, you have a legitimate uh, finding. 
What does it mean? Well, at this point, it means nothing to your government in the United States. They're not checking this. Or perhaps I'm wrong. Maybe they are checking it. And we'll find out if they are, if, we're, if we assume they are, which they are probably not, uh, we'll see if they did a good job, at least with this item. Well, as you know, our previous background right here in Radiation Station, where this is being tested, it was uh, 41.7 counts per minute. It's a way of counting the radiation. You, this machine can also count it in millirem an hour. It would look different. It would be a fraction in here about 0 0.012 to 0 0.014. People tend to think uh, clearer in counts. So what we have here is uh, you take a 10 minute count, we got 417 divided by 10, 41.7 counts a minute. What we had here, do the same thing. Then we'll minus the back end from it. Then we'll divide the, the result we get from that, because it'll be a positive result, obviously, is uh, we will get that result and divide it by the background to see how many percentile over the background it is. So we have 643 total counts, 64.3 counts a minute. I'm just doing the math over here. So if we take 64, by the way, what you're hearing is, is it's continuing to detect, it's just not putting it on the screen. So we take uh, this and minus, hold on folks, 64.3 minus 41.7 and you get 22.6. Divide that by 41.7, that's 54.2% over background. So this seaweed with the bag around it is 54% over background. Now you might think, well, background, you know, you get more going up in a plane. Well, guess what? It doesn't work that way. You go up in a plane, getting gamma radiation it goes through you it keeps going when you eat something that has possibly fissile products from a melted down nuclear reactor you eat it it's going to go in you and uh, might not do you any good so we're going to come back and we're going to take another background and we're going to measure that out of the bag